We have a standard clinical pathway when a patient comes in in an inpatient or in an outpatient. Specifically, we have guidelines on what we are expected to do. Also, we have a flow diagram itself. So, for example, patient in, comes in outpatient, we evaluate them, um, then we get nurse to talk to them. Then we basically classify them according to the type of symptoms that they have and, and what they are suffering from and what they are more, um, what's, which set of symptoms they are more upset with and are troubling them. And then the uh, uh, moto, non moto. For example, if patients have uh, more have problematic non motor problems, then we will refer them, you know, uh, accordingly to the different specialties or in the medicine. When we look at the options, the surgery has now moved into a very high tech uh, realm. Um, we are uh, using computers to navigate and we are using uh, electrical impulses to modify how the brain network functions in these patients. So the therapy that we currently advocate for patients with uh, advanced Parkinson's disease is deep brain stimulation. Um, this is the current standard for therapy. NNI has had a very long-standing interest in, in treatment of uh, movement disorders um, and we have quite a mature team. Um, we at the moment have three neurologists uh, who are very specialized in treating movement disorders and the bulk of their work is the treatment of patients with Parkinson's disease. So our neurologists are the ones who uh, select patients uh, for the deep brain stimulation and after the initial selection they are then uh, referred to the neurosurgeon to evaluate their general suitability in terms of uh, are there risks that we have to address sometimes issues of the fitness of their heart can they withstand an anesthetic all these things will be assessed and they will be optimized sometimes by referring to another specialist that's relevant. Um, the other members of the team are the nurse clinicians. Uh, they are very much involved in uh, the actual direct uh, assessment where we have to test patients. Uh, we generally test them um, when they are without medications and then retest them when they take their medications. It is very important that these patients still show response to the medicine. Our minimum cutoff is that they must show at least 30% improvement between the no medicine to the with medicine state. If they don't show this much improvement as a minimum, they are unlikely to benefit very much from deep brain stimulation. So it would not be a, a, an ethical practice to, to suggest it to them. So the team also involves uh, psychologists and at times we also involve psychiatrists um, because very often patients who have been ill for a long time have uh, issues of depression and these also need to be addressed. Patients who are very depressed are also not very suitable candidates. Um, apart from that, the team also involves uh, physiotherapists and speech therapists um, who are very much involved in managing these patients because it's not just the operation but after the operation, we need to improve the physical condition of the patient so they can take advantage of what the deep brain stimulation offers them. The Parkinson's Disease and Movement Disorders Center here at NNI um, has received um, the seal of approval as an international center of excellence by the US-based National Parkinson Foundation. We are proud to receive this because this is uh, the gold standard which they have set for excellence in, in patient care, comprehensive patient care, um, research in, in different aspects of Parkinson's disease, both clinical as well as laboratory research, as well as outreach, our ability to reach out to patients, carers, as well as um, community care partners as we have done. The Community Healthcare um, Partners Programme 
um, began with the aim of um, engaging the healthcare providers in the community because we recognize that Singapore is an aging population and in the long term um, we need a lot of help in the community and our desire is that patients rather than going to nursing homes are able to stay at home with their families but with a lot of support um, from the community um, healthcare organizations and we have a lot of these volunteer organizations out there.